Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lexi. Today I'm going to be talking about an experience that I had this past week that was different than normal. I did do a three day fast. Um, so I'm going to talk about that and my experience with that and just about extended fasting in general. So first off, um, my weight update. Last week I reported that my weight was up to 183.7. Um, this was after a lot of different things, a vacation, a surgery, um, and then also just experimenting with some modified fasting on my uh, pre-cycle, menstrual cycle week um, for hormone building. Um, so yeah, I was up and as of this Saturday, I today I'm at 181.8, so 1.9 pounds down. And later I'm going to break that down a little bit, like what my week looked like as far as weight loss went, because it was pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, still out of my goal range, so still going to work on that. As I mentioned in my last video, I said that if I get knocked out of my goal range, which is the 170s, um, I am going to stick to three days of fasting a week until I get back into that goal range and then go from there. <clears throat> So this past week, I was ready to get back into my Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. And again, as last week, the week before happened, um, that wasn't going to work because I realized next week I am going to the dentist to get some amalgam fillings removed that I have in my mouth. They're like the silver mercury fillings that I've been wanting to get removed for a long time. And my dentist um, is having me do this seven day detox before that. And I thought it was just supplements, but then when I was looking into the pamphlets and all of the uh, materials, I actually had to do a actual diet for those seven days. And and I also had to take supplements three times a day along with this diet. So there was just no way that I was going to be able to do fasting during that time. So I was like, ah, well, that kind of throws things off again. And I really wanted to do three days. So, so I realized that this would actually be a perfect time for me to do a longer fast, to do a three day fast, because, you know, after everything that um, it was happening in my body with the kidney stones and the procedure and um, getting sick and stuff. I realized that my body could definitely benefit from a longer fast. And so I'm going to go into some of that a little bit later as well. Uh, why you would want to do a longer fast. And um, so I decided to go ahead and do a three day fast Monday through Wednesday. Now up to now, the longest fast that I've ever done was 70 hours. And that was back at uh, Thanksgiving of 2019, American Thanksgiving, which is at the end of November here in the States. And that was just, it was actually okay. It was not hard. I, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. And, um, the hard part about it was that I did it right after Thanksgiving dinner. So like I started fasting right after Thanksgiving dinner. I think it was like 5.30 on Thanksgiving day. Uh, my last thing I ate was a roll. <laughs> I had pie and then I had a roll, another roll, and then I started fasting. Um, and it was hard because I had family in town and you know, of course they were eating. I was cooking for them. And, um, so it was a little bit awkward not to eat with them, but actually nobody really said anything. So, um, but it was hard because I had so many leftovers in the fridge that were just sitting there and I wanted to eat them and I didn't want them to go bad. And it, that was just bad timing. But anyway, so yeah, 70 hours was the longest that I'd done so far. And um, a, a longer fast is just good to reset the immune system, basically, which was something that I felt like I really needed right now. And also, I felt like maybe going into this detox diet, it would actually make it easier. 
um, if I had started with a fast rather than, you know, eating normal food and then going into this very restrictive diet, which it is. Um, the set, I'll go into it more next week to talk about that, but, but the diet that I'm like in the middle of right now, um, basically it, it starts off restrictive and then gets more and more restrictive. So, you know, it's cutting out food groups and things and, and then on the tail end of it, you're basically just eating green vegetables, apples, pears, and blueberries, kind of random, I know. Um, but yeah, so very restrictive. And um, so I thought, you know, maybe that doing a longer fast would help me ease into that better. And who knows, you know, maybe it was a good idea, maybe it was a bad idea. I'm just an experiment of one, so here we are. Um, so I'll tell you how it went and kind of like what my weight did as I progressed. So as far as weight, now I have really wanted to stay away from the 190s. I'm like, I never want to be in the 190s again. Um, I'm okay with jumping into the 180s, that's going to happen. But like, no, I don't want to see 190s. So I came very close. Um, Monday morning after uh, my three days of eating of the weekend, which was my son's birthday. And um, I think I was probably just eating a little bit more because I knew that I was going into the three day fast and I, I knew I was going, going to have this restrictive diet. So um, yeah, I it was an indulgent weekend for sure. But Monday I was up to 189.9. So couldn't get any closer to the 190s than that. Started my three day fast. <clears throat> and then Tuesday I was at 185.9. So that was already four, point, four pounds down. Wednesday I was at 182.9, which is another three pounds down. Thursday I was at 180.6, which is 2.3 pounds down. So for the three days, and I ended, I broke my fast at around almost 85 hours. Um, so for those three days, that was 9.3 pounds down from Monday. But before you start thinking, oh man, I'm going to do a three day fast and lose 10 pounds. Well, I have to tell you that <clears throat> for one, that's not going to be everyone's experience. I had gained weight really quickly before this point. And so usually when you gain weight really quickly, you're gonna lose weight really quickly. And I think that I probably would have ended up in about the same place if I had even, if I had just done my regular three day fast, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it would have been a lot easier. Um, also, the other thing is, is that um, I, then ate for two days, but I was eating, I was eating a very restricted diet. So I didn't gain a lot back, but if I had been eating my normal diet, I probably would have gained more and maybe been, you know, the net loss wouldn't have been nearly as much. So that to say Friday, I only gained 0.7 pounds. I was up to 183.3. Saturday was at, as I said today, 181.8, which was 0.5 pounds up. So again, that was just because I was eating different foods than normal. You know, as of now, I've not been eating any gluten or dairy or sugar. Um, and so, you know, pretty clean. And that's why I haven't gained a lot back. But when you do a longer fast and you start eating, especially if you eat normally, you're going to gain some of that back. Like it's inevitable because food puts weight on and that's okay. Like, and a, a lot of what you lose is not even fat anyway, it's just water weight. So you're going to get that back when you start eating again. Um, so that's something to, to think about. So let's talk about how it went and I would say it went pretty well. My first day was actually hardest, maybe. I would say actually my first day was my hardest, which was weird because I'm used to fasting for a full day all the time. But I think it was probably just because of how I was feeling physically, but also just maybe mentally knowing that I was going into a longer fast, you know, because I think when I 
I'm doing my normal fast and I think, oh, I get to eat tomorrow, you know, um, there's kind of a piece with that where I don't like worry about food or whatever. Um, but knowing that you're not going to eat for a couple days or a few days, it, um, it's a little bit different of a mindset. And so it was harder for me, I think, just to, I don't know. Um, that's what I think. That's what I think made it harder. And I did have kind of a headache towards the end of the day, which I don't normally get headaches when I fast. It's pretty rare. Uh, so I did just stick to um, Himalayan salt a little bit when I felt like I needed it. Uh, I was trying to hydrate purposefully a lot because of the kidney stones. I didn't want to underhydrate. Um, I took some potassium just to supplement um, once a day, like a couple. I don't think it was even that much. Um, and that was it as far as like supplementing. Day two was not bad. Actually, I would say it was my best day, which is interesting because in the past when I've done two day fasts, Sometimes the second day has been the hardest. And um, one thing that I did do was I checked my blood sugar. And um, I, so Tuesday evening I checked it and it was at 82, which normal range for fasting I think is like well, anywhere under 100. So that was a good number. And according to Dr. Mindy, I'll put it in here. I, I know she says that you should break a fast if you get below 50. Um, and then there's something with ketones. I don't have a ketone reader, so I don't know for sure what that is. Um, and then Wednesday morning, I was at 77. Uh, Wednesday evening, I think I was at 79. I'll put that in here for sure, but I'm not 100% on that. And then Thursday morning, I was at 66. And this is when I started to feel dizzy and kind of shaky. And this is what I was gonna break my fast anyway. So I felt like it was a good time for me to break my fast and I was glad that I was doing it. Um, so you just wanna be careful, be mindful of your blood sugar and how you're feeling. And if you're just uh, you know, feeling really lethargic and dizzy and weak, that is going to happen and you might be able to push through it, but uh, you really want to be careful and mindful about breaking your fast. And um, just speaking about what happens to your body and why you would want to do a longer fast. Um, well, we know that you go into ketosis and that happens kind of early on. Um, and that's one benefit. Also, your human growth hormone starts starts going up, which is great. It helps you preserve your muscle mass. Um, around 24 hours, I believe, is when your uh, intestinal, intestinal stem cells regenerate. Also, there's BDNF, which is some kind of brain chemical that helps your brain work better at 24 hours. Um, and then beyond that, there's just some more things that happen. Your insulin is going to drop, which is awesome. And that's why really alternate day fasting is a great thing in general, because your, your insulin is going to lower. And then with these longer fasts, that even more so. So I just am going to put it out there. I don't recommend longer fasts for weight loss. Um, but the exception to that is that maybe in the beginning a 72 hour or even just a 62 a 60 hour fast like a two-day fast could be beneficial in helping to lower your insulin and improve your insulin resistance i know that dr fung does that with his patients sometimes but in general he just has them do alternate day fasting i think it's better just to stay consistent and build that over time for weight loss versus like pushing yourself into these longer fasts because it can really backfire. And I'm going to talk about that some more. Um, so going forward with the benefits though, um, there's more than I can even remember. I will link a video about what happens to your body when we fast from Dr. Mindy Pels. And there are a lot of videos on YouTube you can find about what happens like hour by hour with your body. But it's pretty fascinating and and it just can be a very healing thing and i know that people who are seriously ill 
have used fasting to heal and I believe in it. I really do for healing, but you got to be careful. And especially if you're very sick, you need to be monitored by someone, you know, some kind of health professional that you trust um, and, and be around people that, you know, can check in with you because um, it can be dangerous. It really can. And so I don't want to put it out there that, oh, everybody should extend it should do extended fasting. I don't think that everyone should do extended fasting. Um, I think it's kind of like if you're to imagine a pyramid, you know, and on the bottom you have who should fast like 12 hours, pretty much everyone can fast 12 hours, you know, maybe not pregnant people or, you know, some people, but like almost everyone can fast 12 hours. And then you have going up in hours, less and less people should be doing that. And so at the top here, you have people who should be doing extended fasting. And um, with the benefits, <clears throat> it seems like they kind of taper off and end at about five days. So even when you're going to do a deeper fast for healing, I feel like it would be better to do five day fast, just three to five days um, periodically rather than going into like a I don't know, a 21 day fast or whatever. I don't know, I'm not an expert. That's just kind of the way I feel is that mentally and physically, it would be better to do, do it that way, um, especially for women based on, you know, the last video that we talked about how, you know, that you can really mess up your hormones if you're fasting at the wrong time of the month. So you just wanna be really careful about all of those things. Um, and I'm going to post another video. So about, about extended fasting for weight loss, I'm just going to touch on it really quickly because I think it's an important thing that, um, unfortunately, a lot of people that go to fasting and weight loss is one of their primary reasons for that. They may end up feeling like, well, if a little fasting is good, then more fasting is better. And I'm just going to keep fasting until all this weight is gone. And that can be so dangerous, especially for women. And I just really want to discourage you from doing that. And I know there may be people who are watching who have had a good experience, but I think that that is a very small percentage of people. And so the video that I'm going to post, her name is Mariah Vittoria. Now I want to put a disclaimer out there. One, there's a little bit of language in the video. So if you're watching this around kids, you know, you may not want to have the volume up. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is just that when I post a video of someone else, it's not that I agree with everything that they say or do. It's just that, you know, this particular thing that I'm sharing, I think there's something to be learned from it. And I do actually admire her courage for sharing her experience because I don't think there are a lot of people out there who are doing so. And what she did basically was she fasted for 52 days, I believe, and lost like 40 pounds. And during the process, she felt amazing and really like um, touted extended fasting for weight loss and was super stoked about it. And uh, I didn't watch any of those videos, but she's talked about it a lot since. Um, but then in the year after, basically what happened was she lost a ton of hair. She lost her period for three months and she gained back all the weight and then plus some probably and just went into an extreme like hunger cycle where basically her body like could not feel satisfied and is still kind of dealing with the after effects of that. So like the reason I found her videos is because she was recently doing alternate day fasting. Um, but ended up having to quit because she was having all of these issues come back again. And so it's been a long process for her. And I just wanted to share her video to um, put that out there because I really don't think it's a good idea, you know, for women. I think that because of hormones and also just your metabolism is going to go down after about three days, I think is when your metabolism starts to go down because your body is preserving what it has to live off of. And so, <clears throat> yes, you're gonna keep losing weight, but um, 
once you start eating again, your body is going to be like, okay, we're eating again. We're not going to let go of that food. And it just starts this vicious cycle. And so you've got to think about not only what you're doing, but what you're going to do after. And you can't sustain something like that. You know, nobody can. And so alternate day fasting is very sustainable. Doing a three to five day fast, maybe once a year or once a quarter. Some people can do it once a month. You know, you just have to see what you can handle. But like in general, jumping into these long fasts repeatedly or doing a very long extended fast can backfire really badly. So I just want to put that out there because I never want, I, I don't want anyone watching this video to think, oh, you know, you lost 10 pounds in three days. So it's great. Let's go ahead and do 20 days and lose 40 pounds. You know, it doesn't work like that. Um, the numbers don't work like that, but also your body just is not going to work with that. And your brain, it's, it's a mental thing as much as a physical thing. And, um, I just caution against it a hundred percent. So I really hope you guys are well, and let me know if you have any questions. I, I know there's a lot more to it. Um, but this video is already getting really long, so I want to leave it there and, um, let me know if you have questions and I'll let you know how things are going in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.